In a recent YouTube video I made, someone posted a comment and they wanted to know if it's possible to automate the WooCommerce product creation as well as creating product variants. I've been playing around with this a lot and I'm excited to say that it is possible, but I'm going to be breaking down some of the important things that I learned in this video on how WooCommerce works, mainly because I couldn't find a lot of information about it that was direct and clear on how to put this all together. So if you've been struggling with this problem or want to automate your online shopping portal, then you've come to the right place. Let's get to it. Hi, how's it going? This is Eric with Solve Cycle Solutions. I'm an automation and no code specialist, and my job is to help save you time so that you can stop working on what you hate and work on what you love instead. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down how WooCommerce works inside of Make.com and how we can create a product from SmartSuite and run it through to WooCommerce, adding different attributes and product variations along the way. But before we get started, I do want to invite you to a free consultation. That's right, I'm still offering free 30-minute calls. If you are looking to build something that you may have seen in one of my videos, if you have ideas for no code, or if you're just stuck in a particular process and want someone to take a look at this and see how we can streamline this. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Feel free to book a call in the link of the description of this video and see how much time you can save in just 30 minutes. Now that we have that housekeeping out of the way, I actually want to demonstrate a little bit of the problem that the commenter was looking for. So if you're not familiar with WooCommerce, that is a free plugin you can use on your WordPress website. I've set this up on my own website just to play around with it. And you'll see that when we open up a product here in the product section, there's a lot of information that we can map. So in this case, I'm going to just put funny shirt, and then you can put a description. I'll say it's funny. And there's lots of information here. We can put pricing. You can put a product image up here if you want, and a short description for other variations that that may show up. But the one thing that this person was wanting was they want to be able to work with variable products. And what that means is when I select this variable, you'll see that some things flip around a little bit, but variables for products tend to just be different variations of the same product that can be applied. So in most cases, that's like a shirt size or a color. So this makes it easier to map all the different variables of the same product without having to have a long list and lose different products or not update certain things depending on how they're supposed to be in your online shop. So here I have a couple of variables and at, in this case they're called attributes I should say. Uh, we have color and we have size. These are the ones that I'm going to be using throughout the entirety of this video. I can pick different things so I could type in green here and it's going to pull this up type in orange and we can pick these individual colors to map to this particular funny shirt. And then for size, I could do a large, I can make a medium and I can make a small as well. And you see that each of these are being mapped as individual variations on the same product. What this person was also asking was for the product variation. So mapping all these different combinations of shirt sizes and colors that can exist. So if I hit the generate variations here under the WooCommerce product, it's going to take a minute to think, but then it's going to spit out all the different combinations here. So we only had green and orange, but if you can imagine that there's a shirt that has five different colors and five different sizes, that adds up to a lot of time that can be wasted building out all of these little products. And even if it is all under this same item, 
you can add different things as different descriptions, different prices, but certain things may change depending on the specific variable that you have. So as you can see, this took a lot of time to make just by trying to demonstrate this for you on its own. So I understand why this request was made. So let's see what we can do to start this process out. So let's now hop into Smart Suite in the test zone solution. We have two specific tables set up. One is the product list, and then the other one is called the variables. So here I have the specific product, shirt, shoes, and socks, and pants. And you'll see that I have some very basic information that I've already just preloaded in here. A description, short description, price, depending on what you're trying to build or what you have to map inside of WooCommerce, there may be different things, SKU numbers, sale prices. There's a lot of data that you'll see that can be mapped to the WooCommerce product. It really just depends on what you need. These are just the basics that I'm using for this example. The main things that we need here are a status, which is going to be a mail hook trigger. And then we have two linked records to the same table. But the last thing that we need here is just the color ID, which is a that attribute ID number, uh, which you didn't see inside of the WooCommerce product, but this is something that we will be mapping out. But it's good to have this information, A, just to keep track of the attributes that we're using, but B, we need to have this information when we are mapping data inside of make.com. So the variables, like I showed you, are just the colors and the sizes. You could add this information yourself. Uh, we have the title of the variable. We have the specific attribute that we'll be under. So in this case, size or color, and then the links to the specific uh, data. And then I've also mapped the attribute ID here as well. The only automation that we have for this particular side of smart suite is going to be another mail hook trigger which if we hop over to make you will see this long line of modules that we have like i've shown in past videos which if you're not familiar with the mail hook i made a video showcasing how to extract this information from smart suite this particular mail hook is going to run the title through this get a record feature uh, inside of Smart Suite, and it's going to then extract a specific product that we're looking to build inside of WooCommerce. Now, one thing I want to highlight, like I mentioned earlier, is that the size and color, if you notice down here, are listed as arrays. And you'll see here that we have four socks, these three sizes, and these four colors. These are still currently set up for my current product so this is all going to be functioning the same way the main goal here is that we need to be able to map the data of these different sizes and colors and we need to be able to put them into a single line to map as attribute variables inside of woocommerce and that like i said it was the hardest part of trying to get this set up because woocommerce is very particular about how they want things done and how they want things formatted to get into their system. So all of this is really just to get these variables set up and logged inside of WooCommerce. So to do that first, we're going to take this iterator and we're going to be able to extract multiple arrays here. The first one we're going to do is the size and the second one we're going to do is color. And you'll see that when we have this information extracted inside of the iterator. It's pulling out these unique different titles in separate lines. The other thing that we need to do now is map the specific variables that we want. So what this is going to do is going to take all the variables that we get and set all of them as both size and color. That may sound counterintuitive and not very useful at the moment, but the main thing is we're trying to, again, organize this information before we consolidate everything in a later step. This particular variable is set up in a aggregator iterator loop. So you'll see that this is, runs twice and the information that's coming out is going to look a little odd because like I said, you'll see that the size 
looks correct, but the colors don't. And then in the second operation, all the sizes are listed as colors, and this one is correct. And what we're doing here is we're going to be mapping all that information into one array, or two arrays, I should say. And again, they're doing the exact same function here of just all the colors are being categorized as size and color, and all the sizes are size and color. The next step is we're going to have this second set multiple variables, which is going to have a little more information here. And you'll see that what I've done is we have mapped the first array bundle uh, and making that anything that contains size is going to be mapped out here. But then the other function we have set up is this join, which allows us to concatenate or combine all of the all of the text that we have that set up in different lines. It's going to be mapped into one long text string. But then we also have to create a divider. And this is, again, very important for the WooCommerce setup. We need to make sure that the divider is a quotation, comma, and then a second quotation mark. The output, again, is going to look just a little off because you think we should have quotation marks at the beginning of both of these, but we now have all of our information put in a single line and organized by a variable that we're looking. The next step that we're going to be doing is actually creating the product. And this is where we're going to take all the information that we haven't been using from the smart suite record. And we're just going to map that data here. You'll see that we have the product name, put in description, short description. The only key things you need to make sure that you set properly are the product type needs to be variable. You'll see that, like I showed you when we were initially setting up the add new product, you have different things you can use. This will only work for the variable function and you have to have this step in order to make everything else work in the future. I tend to leave a lot of the featured, or a lot of the button options either empty or I deliberately select no. You see, there's lots of information that you can customize. The one key thing here is that we're going to leave the attributes blank because these are again, the variants that we're trying to add. We're not doing anything there. What we're gonna do is we're going to make an API call to WooCommerce to now modify the existing product that we have set up now to in integrate the specific attributes that we're wanting. To connect the API, you will need what's called the consumer key and consumer secret. This can be found inside of WooCommerce under the settings and under the advanced tab. There is a section for REST API and basically, you can click in here, generate the key, but make sure you write that down because you will not be able to access it once that page is refreshed. And you'll need to go back into Make and make that solid connection for WooCommerce. But then once you have that all set up, you don't even have to worry about putting this in the URL like you would with an API HTTP request. Instead, you will be able to just go and map the specific URL point that you're looking for. WooCommerce has a very extensive list of REST API instructions, but if you're trying to update the attributes like we are, you'll need to use this forward slash v3, forward slash products, forward slash, and then from the create a product, map the new product ID that you have. For method, you're going to need to select post, you can leave the header items as is. It will be content application. And then you don't need to have query string, but you need to have this particular formula set up. Feel free to pause this particular section of the video to write this down in the exact format that you like. The one thing you need to know here is that the attributes, you'll want to leave a bracket. And then for each variable that you're putting in, you'll need to have this squiggly bracket and make sure you have it closed on the end with a comma. You can add multiple variations, but the key thing here is that you need to have attributes that already exist inside of WooCommerce. If you don't, if you're not sure if you're going to be using attributes, 
you may need to set up a separate function automation to generate the new attributes before you go to this step. But if you're going to be using something like size and color, the attributes are not going to change that much. It's just going to be what variants are going to be in here. So again, going back into the smart suite, you'll see that the color ID is two and the size ID is one. So you need to make sure that you have this particular ID listed here. And if you're going to be having things a little bit of a, as a variant, you can map this data from smart suite, or you can map this if you want. I just left this again because I expect this is going to be pretty repetitive moving through. So basically what each line here is saying is that the ID of the attribute we're doing, so in this case size, we're confirming that the variation is true. This needs to be in here, otherwise you won't be able to add multiple variations. Uh, we also have this title options, which is mapping to the specific variables that we are now going to be entering for this product. And inside of this close bracket, you see that we have the second set multiple variable size, which has the string of titles that we're using, and then another quotation at the end. These two quotations act as the start and end of this full string, and it allows us to more easily put in this information and make sure that WooCommerce is going to separate each individual title. If you don't do this, you'll see this is an attribute that I was testing with inside of my own WooCommerce. You'll see that it will pull things up just as a single string of items. So it's going to say blue, green, orange as one variable, which is not what you want. And then you will need to make sure that there is this comma at the end for each new product you're doing. So if you wanted to add an additional variant, you would have to create a new variant, add variant three ID, and then map that information as well. That's the entire process for mapping the data. So now I want to show you a, that it actually works, and B, what it looks like once you've completed this. So I'm going to go ahead and just run the pants product. I have this set to create a product. You'll see that there's a lot of other information here that you may be able to infer a little bit how this is going to end, but I want to just show you that for, so you see that this is running, and all the information is being mapped and categorized, and boom, look at this that all that information is now complete. So let's take a look at how it looks inside of WooCommerce. So if I refresh my products page here, you'll see that I have pants. Currently says out of stock, but that's okay. I can update that quickly. And you'll see here that inside of the product, I have mapped some basic description. This is already showing up as a variable product. And under attributes, I have all the specific sizes and colors that I put inside of Smart Suite. But if you look under the variations, there still isn't anything here yet. And that's why we're going to have to do a part two on this, going more in depth on how to create the variations and how to map that data around. So there are a little bit of workarounds there and I want to go over that a bit more in depth in another video. So I hope that you got a ton of value out of this and I hope that this makes your WooCommerce work a lot easier. This was a very good challenge so thank you for that comment and the question. If you have specific variables or uh, instructions you're looking to have built inside of Make and Smart Suite, Feel free to just put them in the comments because I would love to have a challenge and work on some things that are interesting to people that I'm looking to help out. That's where I'm going to stop here. Be sure to keep an eye out for part two of this automation process. And again, feel free to reach out in the comments if you have any questions or feel free to also book that free 30 minute consultation for getting more automation set up in your business. That's all I've got to say today, so thank you so much and take care.